Howdy, it's Kyle, talking about Germany. My wife and I recently returned from a trip there where we spent about four days in Munich, one day in a small Bavarian village about an hour train ride south of Munich, a couple of days in a Frankfurt suburb visiting her aunt, and a day in Frankfurt itself. And this was my first time really getting to experience a European country in different places and really enjoyed my time there, just seeing how things are different. Of course, the first things you're going to notice are the architectural differences, just how things look differently, but then you learn the functional differences, like transit and getting around just how things operate there but then as you're there longer you discover just how much the food is so much better higher quality the bakeries and bread just really good so much better so i really wanted to discuss some of the differences between german and american cities with another youtuber but if only there was a german youtuber who's from munich who now lives in the u.s i could talk to about the differences between german and u.s cities hmm all right, guys, I'm here with a special guest, Feli, from the channel Feli from Germany. You probably know who she is. If not, she's uh, German. She's from Munich, Germany, but she's now living in the U.S. in Cincinnati, Ohio. And I recently got back from a trip from uh, Munich and other parts of Germany, so I thought she'd be a great person to ask. So, Feli, thank you for joining me on here and uh, you know, talking to my crowd here. Thanks for having me. Uh, so, yeah, like I was saying, we were just in Munich. I was with my wife. She has uh, family. Uh, elder aunts and uncles in the suburbs of Frankfurt. So we wanted to go somewhere else while we were there. We went to Munich and had a great time there. So how does Munich compare to other German cities? Because we didn't really spend other time in, you know, other big cities, just a day in Frankfurt, but mostly Munich. I mean, it kind of depends on what you compare it to. A lot of people describe Munich as a big village because it is a big city, right? It has about one and a half million um, residents just within the city limits. Um, the metropolitan area, of course, is way bigger than that. So it is a very large and very densely populated city, just like all cities in Germany. But for some reason, it has the feel of kind of more being a village. So it doesn't necessarily have that big city feeling like Frankfurt does, for example, with the skyscrapers, which is like the yes. only city in all of Germany that even has a skyline like that. Um, so I would say in a lot of ways, it's definitely kind of relaxed and cozy. It's very pretty. I, I personally believe that Munich and Hamburg are two of the prettiest cities in Germany in terms of big cities. Um, it has a lot of green spaces, very pretty buildings, even though, of course, a lot of them got destroyed during uh, World War II. Yes. But at the same time, even though I'm saying it's relaxed because you can have all these like beautiful outdoor spaces to like relax by the lakes, relax by the river, all the parks and everything. We have so many beer gardens. At the same time, it is also stressful in a way because it is a very packed and densely populated city. So sometimes when I go back there from like being in the Midwest where everyone has a lot of personal space to themselves, it can feel a little overwhelming sometimes being back in Munich, especially if you go shopping in the pedestrian zone on a Saturday where basically you'll have two inches of personal space on each side and people yeah. will bump into you all the time. So yeah, I think it's like a, it's, it's like stressful in that sense, like all German cities, but at the same time still has that kind of intimate feel to it sometimes. Yeah. We liked when we were there, we would take uh, the Metro to one of the, the plots is, you know, and we just kind of went from one plot to another and just really enjoyed those little areas. And for, for you know, the plot is like a, for the viewers, like a place or a plaza. So there were so many of there. We went to Wiener plots and Pariser plots and, you know, the French part of town. And it was just really small neighbors. And like you were saying, it felt more like villages because each little square, little part of town just felt like a little different neighborhood. And we hopped into a couple of beer gardens and kind of nice. chatted with some of the locals there. So, um, but talking about the Metro there, the Munich Metro was a fantastic system. You know, mm -hmm. Europe in general is known for having great metros. U.S. doesn't. So you're in Cincinnati. What is the Cincinnati public transit like? And, you know, what is it in general compared to Munich? Um, it's almost non-existent, I would say. They do have buses here and they have a streetcar, but that only goes downtown and they only opened this in 2016. So it kind of only connects downtown with downtown. And it was kind of like a failed project. It's There's been a lot of controversies about it because it was so expensive and not that um, efficient, but the buses are really mainly what the public transportation system is. And I know because for the first three years of living here, I didn't have a car. Um, and that was really only possible because I lived in the university area in um, Clifton oh, okay. or Clifton Heights. Yeah. Um, 
And that's kind of the only part of the city where things are walkable in a ways because there are so many students. And I wasn't on campus, but even just like the area right around campus, you'll have like a little corner Target, which usually Target is like this huge store in the US, but they had one that was kind of like a corner store oh, yeah. um, and you could get groceries there and you could get kind of everything you needed there. Um, and there were all these other little stores that were in walking distance. I could even walk to the nearest Kroger. I mean, granted, it was like a 20 minute walk and a lot of people would look at me weirdly carrying my grocery bags yeah. that far because most Americans would think, oh, does is, is this person poor? Does she not have a car? Can she not afford to drive? Um, but I kind of liked it sometimes. Um, and so, but for the first three years, I basically had like my friends drive me around and to get back to the topic, I did ride the bus quite a lot because I was lucky enough that there was a bus line that kind of stopped right by my house. And that was the bus line that connected me with the two most important parts of downtown, which is over the Rhine. And then the downtown area as in like um, the business dis district and the banks. So that was great because I was literally going straight from my house to there and back. So it did take that quite a lot. And I got so many weird questions from locals, <laughs> like Americans who grew up in the city who had never taken the bus and who had yeah. only ever heard terrible things about it. They thought that I was being stabbed on the bus. And um, granted, it wasn't as clean or organized as the public transportation system in Germany. But it also wasn't that dangerous. Like, of course, there were sometimes some, you know, poor people on the bus, but there were also young professionals on it sometimes just taking it to work. Um, so <laughs> I'm actually someone who's at least experienced it, unlike most locals here. The yeah. downside was, except for that one line that went straight by my house, if you needed to go anywhere else where you had to switch lines, the only place to do that in Cincinnati is like at the central bus stop. So if you oh, ever wow. have to switch lines, you have to go all the way downtown to the central oh, wow. bus stop, switch lanes, uh, switch lines. And then, for example, if you want, if I wanted to go to the mall, which was like a 20 minute drive from my house, it would take over an hour by bus because. Oh, wow. That's it would take such. A yeah, I didn't time. realize it was that inefficient there. And one thing that's interesting, you probably might not think of it this way, but Cincinnati is one of the more walkable cities in the U.S. because it's older, it's got more dense street network. Cities in the southern part of the U.S., the Sun Belt, are significantly worse. But I mean, it was. I mean, we had always heard about how much better things are in Germany, Europe in general, and just it was just such a treat, really, to ride around yeah. on the metro. But I did want to say one thing about the metro. Ask you about it. In general, I found a lot of the German directions and maps and just instructions on how to get around to be really confusing so i've often heard mm -hmm. that german thinking on stuff is a little bit different than other other people so what is your take on german directions and mapping and how it's different than uh in the u.s i thought the metro maps they were pretty confusing yeah, I've heard that a lot from especially Americans. I think in general that Germans aren't as good with signage um, and things like that, with, which I would agree with, especially bigger train stations sometimes have very confusing signs and you can really only find your way around if you are from there and you know what you're doing. Um, honestly, I had never really thought about the metro, so like the subway maps in Munich particularly to be super confusing, but that's also because I grew up there. There just aren't that many lines that like I think that's the easiest they can make it yeah. um, to show you all the lines and all the different stops where you can switch. So, but I've heard that a lot. So I think using an app nowadays is probably the best way to get around because it'll just show you exactly, okay, this is where you have to get off. You have yeah. to go to this line, heading this direction. Usually you can even buy the ticket within the app. So then, cause that's another very confusing part about the Munich subway system, particularly is the way that they ticket you is extremely confusing even for locals because they have these different zones and they change them every year oh, or yeah. every few years so then it's like if you cross different zones you have to pay more so it's just not very intuitive at all so if you do it within the app at least the app will tell you how much you have to pay and you're on the safe side but yeah i've definitely heard that a lot from americans and i think americans are great with signage like it's i think germans sometimes like the challenge i don't know if that's like a mindset thing like sometimes if it's made too obvious almost like in the u.s um we laugh about it in a way like you know if there's a bathroom right in front of you and then there, there's a sign right next to it that says, that says bathroom oh, then yeah. um german tourists sometimes find that funny but i mean i personally prefer to be overly clear than not clear enough and tourists get lost in your city yeah so one thing i wanted to ask you is just 
suburbs in Germany, again, this was in Frankfurt or Munich, how does that compare to some of the suburbs in Ohio or just in the U.S. in general? I think the interesting part is that suburbs in the U.S. are usually artificially built, right? Or at least the ones that I would think of usually are like these subdivisions that are maybe like 10 years old or maybe 30 years old, but they're like relatively new and they were kind of built for the whole purpose of just being a suburb to the city. And they usually that's kind of what Germans know from the stereotypical American movies is like you'll have your typical American neighborhood where everyone has this huge front yard and these super wide yeah. streets, but there's no cars. Um, and that's kind of what I picture when I think of American suburbs is these like subdivisions with a lot of cul-de-sacs and everything like that. In Germany, we don't really have that a lot. Um, suburbs to a big city are usually old towns and old cities that are just smaller that in a lot of cases have been around for just as long or even longer than the big city itself. And the cities in Germany and Europe in general, usually they, they grew from the city center out, right? And so over time, they swallowed a lot of these other little towns. So in Munich, for example, there are so many what are now neighborhoods of Munich, they used to be their own town. And you can sometimes still tell because they'll have their own little square. So a lot of these squares oh, okay. are there because they used to be the center of what that town used to be. Sometimes they'll have like a central church still, or like they'll still do the traditional May festivals where they'll have like a May pole um, set up. And that's because that place used to be its own city, its own town. So, for example, in Munich, um, some of the suburbs, for example, that a lot of Americans are familiar with is Dachau. Um, people know that as a concentration camp, but it's actually yeah. a very old and pretty city. The concentration mm. camp just happened to be located right by the city. So that's why it was called concentration camp Dachau. Um, but Dachau, for example, is a, is a city by itself with a castle and everything. But it's also considered a suburb of Munich because it's cheaper to live there than to live in this in the city itself in munich itself and i think that's another big difference is that in the us i feel like there's kind of this trope of once you've made enough money you move out of the city and you move out of the yeah. out to the suburbs and that's kind of your when you're wealthy enough that's the luxury that you give yourself whereas in germany for in most cities i would say it's the other way around um you live in the suburbs because you have to save money and you can't afford living in the city um, and then once you have enough money, you can move closer and closer to the center, which is where most people want to be. Or if you're like really rich, you can also move completely out of the city and go to like one of these very expensive, uh, like, for example, around Munich, it would be lake cities or lake towns oh, okay. by like Higansee or Stamberger See with like these very expensive villas. That's then another step after that. But Living in the suburbs, for the most part, is not the luxury thing to do. It's usually what you do when you can't afford living in the city. And that's more common throughout the world where, you know, in Latin America or African, you know, just other parts of the world, people want to be closer to the center and being farther out is usually a sign that you can't afford to live in the center. So it, it is kind of like you were saying, almost opposite here in the U.S. where it's you almost have more pride being farther out, having more space. Mm -hmm. But I think in some places though, there is more desire to be downtown, but like what you're saying, it's just, it's just so expensive for many people. So they are out in the suburbs wanting to be downtown, but uh, they can't. Um, so, it, but yeah, I think the suburbs are more higher profile here in the U S yeah. than in Germany uh, in general. Yeah, I think, I think a lot of people in the U S don't even really want to be downtown. I feel like sometimes American city centers are kind of associated with like they're dirty and there's a lot of crime. And I think it's not sometimes considered as luxurious as city centers in Europe are. Yeah. And going back to Cincinnati, uh, one of the worst neighborhoods historically was the over the Rhine neighborhood yeah. uh, neighborhood that got its name because of all the German immigrants that moved there originally. What is your take on Cincinnati and, you know, the U.S. in general, people with German heritage kind of really going overboard, like, I'm German. What is what is your, as an actual German, take on that? It was so funny at first because I came here and I would just kind of throw that into the conversation pretty early on because I wanted people to know that, hey, I might not understand everything you're saying. Or, you know, if you hit me with some slang, I might be confused. I just want, wanted people to know why. And I didn't want them to think that I'm just a rude person or something like that. Or if they talked about something local, like 
sports teams or, you know, certain streets that I'm not familiar with. I just wanted them to know. So I would throw that out there pretty early. And then in a lot of cases, I would get back, oh, I'm German too. And I'd be <laughs> like, oh, really? Where are you from? And they'd be like, oh, you know, I'm from Cincinnati. Uh, my great great grandmother was somewhere from Germany. And so then we would get into the conversation that I would have to say, oh, no, like I'm actually German. I'm actually yeah. from Germany is what I mean by that. I was born and raised. I just came here last year. Um, and so I had a lot of those conversations at first, and especially if I met people in them in a more crowded, louder um, environment, like at um, it was like exhibitions sometimes because I actually worked for uh, the Over the Rhine Museum for a while, which is a nonprofit organization. And I would do like tabling events. And so it would be kind of louder and people didn't hear my accent right away. So then they'd be like, oh, yeah, I'm German, too. How funny. <laughs> and I'd be like, no, no, that's not what I mean. And of course, Americans do that with other ancestry, too. Like they'll say I'm yeah. Irish, I'm Italian. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Also, something I noticed about uh, Germans uh, in terms of travel is they love to hike. You go to the American mm -hmm. National Parks right. and you'll see a bunch of Americans and then other nationality you'll see a lot there are Germans. So yes. what is what is that? What's up with that? Germans just really like to be outside. I think a lot of it has to do with the weather somehow. Um, whenever the weather is nice in Germany, you have to take advantage of it because you don't know if it's going to be like that tomorrow or next week, or maybe it was the last nice day of the year. You never know. So I think that is one part that plays a role is that whenever it does get nice, Germans are like, okay, let's go outside. And nice can mean even just it doesn't rain or yeah. it's not storming. Um, and I think the other part is just a cultural like mentality thing. Germans just really, really like outdoor activities. Um, whenever it is nice in Munich, for example, every single thing you can do outside is going to be busy. So like the whole parks, they're going to be packed yeah. even during the week. Um, people will take advantage of that so much people will be swimming in the rivers and in the creeks um you can surf in yeah, the surfers, these waves yeah. in munich and, i mean they do that all year round they do that in the middle of the winter too but especially on a nice summer day um you'll see that yeah people will be hiking people will be going for a walk there's like this meme like cliche that a first date in germany will most likely be you go on a walk with the person because Germans just really like to walk. I don't know. It's like this cultural thing. I think we just really enjoy doing something and not just sitting somewhere and consuming or watching. We like to kind of be active on vacation. Or yeah, I mean, I Germans know. just appear to be much more active in general than Americans just in their day-to-day -day lives. Mm -hmm. All right. Well, I wanted to ask you a couple more questions. I know you've done this on your channel, but what is the number one thing you'd like to see from a German city, specifically in Cincinnati? Yeah, I think probably one of the things that I would like to bring over from Germany to an American city like Cincinnati would kind of be everything transportation related. So, yeah, be better public transportation, but also sometimes making things more walkable, which, of course, you can't just shrink up the city. That's not possible. Yeah. But um, making it easier to walk around because sometimes there is just no sidewalks or the sidewalks are just not very easy to access. There is no um, crossover for pedestrians in some parts or in rural areas here. Uh, a lot of towns don't have sidewalks at all. Um, and again, for bikers, too. I mean, if you want to be active and you want to cycle to your local grocery store, which is totally doable in a lot of parts here, it's not very safe. So yeah. Kind of making that a priority too. That you know there would be a bike lane that ideally has like a physical barricade to oh, yes, yes. the street, so that cars can't hit the cyclists. That's something that I would like to see. However, is it realistic that Americans here would actually change in that way and adapt to that? I don't know. But in an ideal yeah. world, that would be awesome. Well, yeah, it was great to talk to you. I, I appreciate you coming on the channel to answer some questions and, and talk to my viewers. It was really good to have you on. Thanks for all the, the wonderful insider information on Germany. Thank so you. Uh, thank you again, Feli from Germany. My pleasure. Thank you so much. I hope you enjoyed this video and this new format of me talking to other YouTubers. So look for other videos like this in the future every now and then where I talk to other creators about various subjects. So if you enjoyed this video, please give me a thumbs up to let me know you approve and subscribe to this channel if you're interested in learning more about geography from a nerd. But don't forget about Mirway maps, beautiful maps like these right here. You can check out the link in the description with a coupon code for a nice discount. But yeah, thanks for watching. Geography King signing out. I'd like to give a special thanks to my superior patrons for their support, especially Megan M. Welcome to the club. If you're interested in supporting the channel, you can check out my Patreon page. The link is in the description. As always, thank you very much.